Well, about a month ago, PCBWay reached out to me, saying that they'd like to sponsor a project. And since I've known about PCBWay for a very long time, I was very excited. Well, I needed a circuit to base a PCB design around, and I remembered that I needed to get working on this AM transmitter. So, here we are. Now, before I get to that, here's a recap. So, back in about May of 2023, a YouTube viewer of mine sent me this very nice AM transmitter circuit. Compared to my other circuits, it has an audio amplifier, a more advanced mixer slash modulation circuit, and a Pierce oscillator that uses an N-channel JFET instead of a regular BJT transistor. And overall, this is a very nice and much more advanced design. And in the last AM transmitter video, I attempted to build this the best I could, but I had a few issues. So this Pierce oscillator, while it's a nice design, as many times as I've built it, I just can't seem to get it to create a signal. Now I haven't verified that all of these components work and that they're the right values. I've used various different components of these values. I built this on prototype board, I built it on solderless breadboards, I've even now done it on a printed circuit board. I don't know. The only thing that I could logically conclude is that the N-channel JFETs that I ordered must all be broken. Now I don't really have a good way of testing these other than building this circuit, so I'm not totally sure, and that doesn't seem very likely, but it's the only thing I could come up with. Now if you're wondering, this is a 2N4117 N-channel JFET, and you can get these in TO-92 configuration, but I can't seem to find any on eBay. So you're going to be using these CAN types, the TO-72. So my solution was to just build the rest of the circuit, but instead of this oscillator, I would just use my standard regular Pierce oscillator that I've been using for, by this point, a little over three years now. This I built shortly after that video. It was kind of a little personal challenge. I took my usual oscillator design and tried to make it as small as possible. You can see there's a signal and plus and minus 12 volts. Works pretty good. But anyway, this is besides the point. So I basically stuck that in place of this circuit and that seemed to make it to work. The problem is this whole thing is specifically designed for 7.2 megahertz. Now I didn't know how reliant it would be on that frequency. So I decided to stick a 3.579545 megahertz color burst crystal. And while the circuit still did produce a radio signal, it didn't work very well and it was on the wrong frequency. So this 47 picofarad capacitor acts a bit like a filter. Now this isn't a bandpass filter or anything, so it's not 100% perfect, but this will basically cut off a lot of signals below 7.2 megahertz. So when I built the prototype circuit in the last video, and included a 3.5 MHz crystal, it basically cut that frequency off. I managed to hear it on the harmonic frequency, the triple harmonic, of 10.563. And I didn't check it at the time, but it was also transmitting on the double harmonic, which was about 7.159. So the other problem I had was with the audio amplifier circuit, which feeds directly into the modulation circuit. While it was amplifying my audio, it was distorting it pretty badly. I measured the input straight from the headphone jack on my big oscilloscope, and it looked fine. But then I measured the output, and it was all spiky and distorted. And when I listened to the radio signal on my receiver, it sounded pretty distorted, and the audio was not very good. Now, since I created that video, creator commented, and one suggestion he made was to remove this 330 nanofarad mylar capacitor. And he said that in his testing, he found that it causes more problems than it solves. And so in the transmitter that I built today, I removed this capacitor. Soon as I agreed to the sponsorship, I was tasked with learning how to make a PCB. And I used the software package KeyCAD, which is very helpful and good for beginners. Well, anyway, I had to convert that paper schematic into a digital schematic, which this is a piece of paper printed off from the digital schematic that I made. Other than a few capacitor values that I wrote down wrong and that mylar capacitor that I removed, 
it's pretty much the same. As soon as I finished my design, I placed my order, and within only a few days, this package arrived. Now I know they gave these to me for free, but I am not biased when I say that the manufacturing quality is absolutely immaculate. I mean, I can't describe how amazing it is to see a circuit I threw together on the computer a few weeks ago represented as an actual printed circuit board. So yeah, I definitely recommend PCBWay. Now I got this in yellow, but they come in a lot of other colors, and if you don't want to circuit board like this. They also offer a whole bunch of other manufacturing processes for their circuit boards. And if you don't want a circuit board, they also offer other services like CNC and 3D printing. Now since this is the very first PCB I've ever designed, there are of course a few minor design errors. Mainly these jumpers up here are slightly too close to each other and this TO72 transistor hole arrangement while the transistor fits in here very well, two of these pins are swapped around. I'm pretty sure it's these two. So on the board that I soldered together, I had to switch some of the pins around on the transistor. But other than that, everything turned out pretty dang good. Well, here's the circuit put together and running. And while it does work, I am dealing with some of the same problems as last time. Now this N-channel JFET based Pierce oscillator must be cursed or something. I even went and ordered some more transistors, more N-channel JFETs of a different manufacturer from a different eBay seller, and I still can't get it to work. So if anybody knows if there's something wrong with the design or anything, let me know in the comments. But just like last time, I have injected a small little Pierce oscillator based on the design that I use all the time. So it's injecting 7.2 megahertz into the circuit, and it's basically bypassing the N-channel JFET based one that's on the board. Now unfortunately that doesn't solve the problem of me wanting to use the original design back here, but at least this time I'm giving it the correct 7.2 megahertz, and so it does transmit on the right frequency. And once again I'm also having issues with the audio amplifier. Here I'm using my portable Allosun digital oscilloscope because I don't want to bring out the big one. And more details about what the issue is are in the last AM transmitter video. But what I'm having here, this is the audio input coming out of the headphone jack of my little iPod. And it's just playing some old 50s music right now, but that doesn't matter. So this is what a normal waveform looks like. And this is the transistor output. And while it is indeed amplifying it, making the signal bigger and a little bit louder, it's terribly distorted, you can see. Not only is the signal very spiky, but it's also only on the top of the AC waveform. So, that's not very good. And so if you listen to the transmitter, just like in the last video, while you can hear it, it still sounds pretty bad. Now, there is that little potentiometer on the board, and when I adjust that, that can make it sound a little less distorted if I turn it down. But then it just becomes so quiet, it's impossible to hear. And the distortion, if I measure the waveform, is still there. Well, how does the transmitter actually sound on a receiver? Well, here I'll give you a little listen. Well, anyway, if you don't recognize that, that's the platters. The audio is still pretty distorted, although honestly it does sound a bit better than on the last transmitters. Well, anyway, this video wasn't really meant to accomplish a whole lot. It's mainly I just wanted to show progress and what I've been doing with this circuit, and I also wanted to show the cool PCB. Now, this transmitter I've been working on and off for, well, since May of 2023 when the viewer sent it in. And I have a lot of projects going on all the time, both personal and for YouTube. And this is one of those things that I've kind of been kicking down the road a lot. I work on it on and off. And a lot of the times I run into a roadblock, got to order parts, and then I kind of put it down for a long time. So that's kind of why progress has been slow. And I still want to build 
the circuit to its full potential and also a ham radio enabled version of the circuit. I can't guarantee when I'll be doing that, probably in another few months, because uh, I have some other neat projects planned, including uh, PCB related projects that will probably demonstrate a working circuit a bit better. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something, and uh, if you see anything wrong, let me know in the comments because I'm not actually that advanced in this radio stuff as I may seem. I'm still learning a lot about this, so please let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.